Hello everybody, it's Secondhand Dan. Thought I'd show you what I'm into today. This should be a short video, but new to me, a 2008 Lexus RX 350. I have a uh, 330 back in Pittsburgh and it's been a great car. And I managed to pick this one up at an auction down here. And I've been pretty pleased with it. It looks a lot better than uh, one we have at home, which we had for 15 years. This one's got 117,000 miles on it, but I thought I'd just give you a little uh, heads up. I was doing a uh, post-purchase inspection. Um, I took out the uh, air cleaner and wanted to check it out, and it was fairly clean. So I went to put it back together. To, to get in there, you have to back this one off, remove that clip, remove this bolt, and the one in the back. Well, the thing was, things went rather well. Now we got to remove vacuum, vacuum lines and replace them. So I've already been in there, and when I went to put it back together, I ran into an issue. The back bolt, when I was taking it apart, I'm like, oh man, the mechanic, whoever was in here last, never um, tightened the, last, the back bolt up. So I went to, on reassembly, I figured, well, let me tighten it in place. They just was an oversight. Well, I tried and I tried in the back and it kept turning and turning and I kept wiggling and jiggling and finally I pulled it back out and it turns out that there's a collar on these nuts and the collar had slid up, preventing the bolt from being its true length, so it didn't reach all the way down to the threads. I didn't know that at first, so I'm looking at the uh, bolts, and I said, oh, I thought maybe somebody used an impact gun and it caused it to slide up into that little sleeve. Well, I got the sleeve back in place, and as I was ready to put it back into the unit, Darn if this one didn't slide right out of the housing. And it snapped in, so I don't know why. It slid up and fell into the abyss. So it was down in there. I tried with the uh, magnet on a stick several attempts, and it didn't latch on. So I actually had to go underneath and remove uh, almost all the bolts in the first section of cowling. And I was able to reach my hand up in there, and I did locate it. And I've got it all back into place, so it was better than I found it. Another thing, I don't know why, but somebody, uh, there's a ground wire. Let me go ahead and remove this engine cover. This, it's held on with three rubber grommets that snap into place. You see this ground wire here? It was not attached. When I, I was looking at it yesterday, this nut was just laying right alongside the oil cap. I'm like, what's this nut go to? Bolt. I said, it definitely looks like it's a, of origin of this motor. So that's why I pulled the cover off. And then I, I found the ground wire dangling over there. So why the heck somebody took the ground wire off and did not reattach it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But... Uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, I got some uh, check engine lights came on. So I pulled into the uh, advanced auto yesterday and they put the uh, diagnostic, the OBD on it. And it came up with a code, I believe it's OP536, no, PO536, which says, it, uh, basically, I think, ignition coils, these guys here. But the guy, he didn't specify, and I didn't think until after I left, because he said it was throwing the code twice. I'm like, okay, I don't know why you double it up on codes, but maybe it's each time one of these goes bad, you get a code. But my other thought was, could it be that due to lack of a good ground, that these uh, coils weren't getting sufficient voltage and cause it to throw a code? So I have yet to uh, go out and road test. I did notice the engine was a little shaky 
after I stopped at the uh, advanced auto. So yeah, I said, yeah, it's definitely misfiring, but I haven't had it out on any road tests since reconnecting that ground wire. But my question to you all is, have you had this code and found that you uh, just went ahead and replaced plugs and ignition coils and it went away? I'd be really interested to know if that's what worked for you because I can do the job. Uh, you do have to take a lot of this stuff out to get to the back coils, but I'm willing and able, especially if I know that's the solution. But I'll let you know if, you know, good Lord willing, that maybe it was just poor ground caused those coils to act up. I'm hoping that's what the case because I have the CX-330 2004 with 170,000 miles and I've never replaced the uh, coils. And we bought the car with about 80,000 miles on it. So we put close to 100,000 miles on it and never got a, a coil code. So let me know if uh, that's happened to you. All right, well, thanks. This is Secondhand Dan signing off. Uh, I'm trying out my new microphone. Uh, that way, when I walk away from the phone in a tripod, it's still... Uh, let's go ahead and test that. When I walk away from the phone when it's in a tripod, I won't sound distant. Well, I guess we don't want to look at the side of the house. It's me again, Lord. Okay, well, I got the CT200 over here. If you check out my video, I have a CT100 uh, video of me removing the immersion, not, uh, inversion pump on it. And according to things on uh, eBay, I bought another one. It should be here today. So the only thing is my mail comes around two o'clock in the afternoon. So here in Florida, it's going to be about 85 degrees when we get to that temperature. But here's my inversion pump. So I'm gonna do a part two on the CT inversion pump uh, replacement. Well, thanks everybody for watching. And please give me comments about your situation if you had anything similar to the inversion pump issue or the on the RX the uh, coil issue thanks everybody bye